In this video, we're going to have a look at how to add and subtract fractions. Now, you can only add and subtract fractions when they belong to the same family. And as you know, fractions contain a numerator and a denominator. And you can think of the denominator as the fraction's surname. So if the denominators are the same, you can think of the fractions as belonging to the same family. Now, if the fractions do belong to the same family, then you just group the fractions together like you would group anything else that is the same. So two-fifths plus one-fifth is just the same as three-fifths. All you do is just collect them as you would if you were doing two pence plus one pence, or two pounds plus one pound. You get three pence, or three pounds. So in this case, when we're talking about fifths, we end up with three-fifths. So four-ninths plus one-ninth, you end up with five-ninths. Seven-eighths minus four-eighths, you end up with three-eighths. One-sixth plus two-sixths, you end up with three-sixths. And with any question involving fractions, you always have to make sure that you simplify your answer before you finish. So what goes into three and six? Three does. Three ones are three. Three twos are six. So you end up with a final answer of one-half. Five-eighths minus three-eighths, you end up with two-eighths. Again, simplifying, what goes into two and eight? Two times one is two. 2 times 4 is 8, so you end up with a final answer of 1 quarter. Now, 4 sevenths plus 3 sevenths, that makes 7 sevenths. Now, a fraction is just the same as one number divided by another, so the top divided by the bottom. 7 divided by 7 is 1. 7 sevenths just means one whole, so you just say 1. Okay? 7 ninths plus 4 ninths, you end up with 11 ninths. Now, you don't leave your answer as a top-heavy fraction. So all you do is you think of 11 over 9 as 11 divided by 9, and you end up with a mixed number answer of 1 and 2 ninths. Okay? And if you need revision on how to do that, you can watch the other video. 5 sixths plus 4 sixths, that makes 10 sixths. 9 sixths, sorry. And if you change that to a mixed number, uh, you can either simplify it first, and then change it, or you can change it and then simplify, you end up with a final answer of one and a half, because three-sixths simplifies to one-half. A half plus a third. Now, we have a problem, because if fractions belong to different families, they have different denominators. One is over two, the other is over three. So what you have to do is come up with what we call a common denominator. And one of the easiest ways to do that is just to multiply the two denominators together. And that way you know you've got something into which they both will go. So you want a common denominator. So 2 times 3 is 6. So if you write each fraction as something over 6, then you want to rewrite this as something over 6. So you want to have a look at writing this as an equivalent fraction with a denominator over 6. What have you done to 2 to make 6? You've multiplied it by 3. So you do the same to the top. 1 times 3 is 3. And for this one, what have you done? You multiply 3 by 2 to get 6. Do the same to the top. 1 times 2 is 2. Now you're good to go. 3 sixths plus 2 sixths makes 5 sixths. And that's your final answer. For these, 1 third plus 3 fifths, your new denominator, you can come up with something common like 15. And the top, what have you done? You've multiplied the bottom by 5 to get 15. So 1 times 5 is 5. And as for the second fraction, 5 times 3 is 15. So 3 times 3 makes 9. You've got to make sure what you do to the denominator is the same as what you do to the numerator to ensure that your fractions are equivalent. And then once you've done that, you end up with an answer of 14 over 15 because your fractions are now, uh, now share a common denominator. 2 sixths plus 1 over 2. You could choose a common denominator of 12. So scale this 2 sixths up to something over 12. You double top and bottom, and you get 4 twelfths. And scaling this up, you times top and bottom by 6, so you end up with 6 twelfths. And you end up with uh, 10 over 12, which can be simplified if you divide top and bottom by 2 to get an answer of 5 sixths. OK? Now, if we look at the same example again, you don't always have to 
make a denominator, which is the product of 6 and 2. So you don't have to always multiply 6 and 2. You notice here that 2 goes into 6, and 6 goes into 6. So you can get away with choosing the lowest common denominator and make life a wee bit easier for yourself. So if you can do it, do it. If you don't do it, it's no big deal. You will get to the right answer in the end. So we can just leave 2 sixths as it is, because it's already got a denominator of 6. And we can scale this one up by multiplying it all by 3. And you end up with a, an answer, uh, an equivalent fraction of 3 sixths. Adding then gives you your final answer of 5 sixths. Okay. So it gives the same answer, but you avoid the requirement to simplify. So it saves you a wee bit of time if you spot that. 5 eighths minus a quarter. So if we choose the lowest common denominator, what's the smallest number into which 4 and 8 go? That would be 8. If you chose to use 32, again, you would get to the right answer, but you've got a wee bit of extra work ahead of you. So 5 eighths is already over 8, so we can leave it as it is. And if you double top and bottom, you end up with 2 eighths being equivalent to 1 quarter. Final answer, 5 eighths minus 2 eighths, 3 eighths. 2 thirds plus 5 ninths, again, common denominator, the lowest one will be 9. So 2 thirds, scale it up, times top and bottom by 3, you get 6 ninths. 5 ninths is already good to go. You end up with an answer of 11 over 9, and you can't leave that as your final answer. So you think of it as 11 divided by 9, which is 1 remainder 2, so your final answer is 1 and 2 ninths. So that's how you add and subtract fractions. You want to make sure that both denominators are the same. You want to make sure that you simplify your answer. And you want to make sure that you don't leave any of your answers as top-heavy fractions, but write them as mixed numbers. And that's you. Okay, so I hope that was uh, helpful. And I hope that you're now able to add, add and subtract fractions.